What's up everybody? Welcome to another model breakdown. This is where I look at one particular kit because it could be multi-models in, in a kit. I'm not going to do each one individually, but I look at uh, one kit per ramble and I talk entirely too long about that particular kit. I give you my likes and dislikes, overall thoughts on it, you know, whether I like it or not, anything noteworthy to point out. Then I'll talk about some ideas for building and painting the model because once you're in this hobby for anybody who might be newer to this hobby type of stuff and scale modelists can tell you this too uh, once you get in and get experience with whatever you're building whether it's gunplug kits uh, regular scale model kits miniature wargaming whatever you get a sense for basically what it takes to build and, and paint and put together most things so that i can give you some basic insight there just you know why not uh, and then after that i'll go into my thoughts on if the model I feel needs an update and what I like to see updated in a new model. So this time, instead of doing something like the monolith, which is one of my all time favorites, I'm going to talk about one of my least favorite models, and that is 40k GW's Avadon the Despoiler. I say that because Forge World has the 30k character series model, uh, which he looks pretty great. And then there's an old Forge World model that I think is oversized that was an Abaddon model. I'm not talking about that either. I'm talking about GW's 40k model for Abaddon the Despoiler. So Abaddon, I call him the spoiled child of chaos because he's got to have the favor of everybody, but <laughs> that's just, you know, you know uh, to poke fun and, and whatnot. But his model isn't a bad model. It's one of my least favorite, but it's not a bad model. Najal Stormcaller's power armored model, Ragnar Blackmane's model. I would call those kind of bad models um, nowadays. Avadon the Despoiler, however, is a tired model. It's not bad. The detail is there. It's just it's it's a little it's a little tired. The chaos range for Terminator specifically has been improved immensely since Avadon first came out as a model. So um, they're kind of stealing its thunder. And really, it's that case plus kind of this the technology at the time when they made them that equals a model that's a little lackluster, a little bland feeling with the with a few exceptions in certain parts of the model that uh, I just think isn't a bad buy. But truth be told, I feel like um, Avadon could be given such proper uh do nowadays with current model making technology look at typhus look at araman uh look at cypher they're really nice really cool well detailed interestingly posed without being flamboyantly weird um models and i think abaddon could have very similar treatment and should and would be really cool looking um so that's my overall takeaway and i compare his model, well, not just his model, but Abaddon and Marnaeus Calgary get compared a lot to each other. They're both like the big pimpin', uh, if you will, uh, space marine characters that are codices. Um, high in instructive power and all that, really capable. Oh, often, every time the, the editions get updated for their codices, they're compared to each other. Um, and their models I compare too. And Marnea's Calgar's Terminator model is fantastic. It's got a presence to it. It's got stature. You instantly recognize them. It's very uh, iconic, you could say. And Abaddon's model doesn't have that anymore. A lot of the details on them are Chaos Undivided details, which you're going to see on a whole bunch of models, which is whatever. But on top of that, the current line of Chaos Terminators and the current Terminator Lord kit for Chaos has a lot of bits that are very similar to Abaddon's detail, which steals his thunder a bit. What really makes Abaddon stand out now is going to be his head with top knot and his weaponry. If it wasn't for those things, you could mistake him for a Terminator Lord or even an aspiring champion. Like He's not really that standouting anymore, if that makes any sense. So, um, some specific examples would be the trophy rack while his is more numerous and whatnot the terminator lord and the chaos terminators have trophy racks so that kind of just steals his thunder innately that's not new though but they just look better than his trophy rack so that's not good uh i mentioned the chaos undivided symbology that's just a, just gonna happen but his left leg his left leg uh 
has a like leering demon face on the leg armor down by the knee. It looks cool. It's fine. It's a nice little bit of detail. Unfortunately, the Terminator Lord, I believe, for Chaos has a bit like this similar to it on his leg. And I know one of the Chaos Terminator squad leg bits has a very similar type of thing on the left leg as well. So that, that while it's not exactly the same, it, it is stealing some thunder. And it helps add to the whole bland feeling of Abaddon because he doesn't stand out. He feels like he's just yet another Terminator. And while on one hand you can say, well, that's the point. Two things. He's not Alpha Legion. And this is 40k where your big bad or, you know, big boss has got to be standoutish. You know, it's just it's what happens. That's why I don't wear helmets. That's why um, their models tend to have a unique look. I mean, Armin wears a helmet, but that's not my point. The point is his model's unique. He stands out. Typhus's model, unique, stands out. Karn stands out. Cypher stands out. Renee's Calgar stands out. Uh, Logan, Grim, you know, they all stand out. And Abaddon, you'll recognize him because of the top knot. And if you paint it red, he's very easy to distinguish that way. But if you put him in a sea of Chaos Terminator, like a, a, alongside a Chaos Terminator squad, if it wasn't for the weapons, he really, and the top knot, of course, he's not going to stand out as much. And that's unfortunate. So, with that said, it's a model I. I can't even say I dislike it. I'm kind of neutral towards it. It's just one of my least favorite models, if that makes any sense. You can have things that are your least favorite that you don't hate or dislike or think are bad. They're just for different reasons. And this one is, in particular, a model that I'm one of my least favorite, but I wouldn't call it bad. If you're a Chaos player, if you're a Black Legion fanatic, if you gotta have this, the uh, Avalon to spoil the spoiler, um, <laughs> if you gotta, you want him to run your forces, it's not a bad model. It's not bad. It's just a little tired. And I personally would probably try and convert up the character series model a little bit instead of using this right now. But if you want to go with GW stuff, you know, GW specifically a 40k model for Avedon, all chaosified as he is, you're not, I don't feel you'd be disappointed. So with that said, uh, when it comes to collecting and painting this guy, dry fit everything absolutely 100 percent dry fit everything that's gonna i'm gonna say that every time in these rambles uh because it's so important on top of that i recommend keeping bits separate now a little digging just to see how he comes in, a, in his little blister or whatever and the, both the talon of horus and the demon sword drachnian are separate from the body the trophy racks are separate and the head is separate luckily enough so you might be able to convert up a helmet in there if you really wanted to. But anyways, um, outside of conversion, that's not the point. That's beyond the scope of this uh, ramble. Those bits being separate are nice. You could uh, paint the head up all nicely. You can do all the detail behind the top knot ridiculousness nicely. You can do the trophy rack well, all the, you know, the armor well, the weapons well. And you can glue it all together and do any minor touch of painting you need to do. Just dry fit, dry fit, dry fit. And I recommend painting it in, in uh, separate like it comes. I also recommend black armor is one of those things that I could talk a whole ramble on and probably will at some point because you can do black real simplistically and it looks great. You can make black overly complicated, amazing looking as well. Either way, I just recommend doing the black armor on his armor last because there's so much gold detail and bone detail that you can afford to be a little sloppy with it because doing black armor cleans up really easily with a very fine brush around those detail pieces. I'd rather clean up while doing black than having to go back in and redo certain sections, right? Because if you do black all nice with the highlights and everything, then you get some gold or bone in there. You gotta repaint it up and then re-highlight that area. I'd rather just do it all personally myself after all the detail is done. So that's my recommendation there. So with that said, do I think this model needs an update? Yeah. Unless you skipped ahead to this part of the video somehow randomly and didn't hear what I, what I was talking about, yeah, I think he needs an update. He's tired. It's a tired model. Another example of a tired model uh, is Azrael's model. I really like that model, though, but it is tired. It's been around the block a few times, and it could stand to have an update. In this case, same thing with Abaddon. I just feel uh, more strongly for it because it's one of my least favorite models. 
Now the body's innate posing without the arm, well, without the hands attached and everything is really not bad. They could switch it up a bit and then switch up his arms so you can make him look like he's shooting or st or stabbing, whatever. But the innate posing of the body isn't bad. It's just how the hands connect. It, it feels really kind of um, too neutral. You can have a presence while having a neutral stance. Uh, this one just feels too neutral. It doesn't really have the presence to it. And I think part of that is the way the head's tilted because of the top knot, which if they redid the model today, they still have the crazy top knot, but um, I think they would have it set up better for the head to sit and whatnot. It's not, it doesn't look out of place, but it's just one of those things. The Talon of Horus is too boxy for my taste. If you look at other Lightning Claw type weapons, so that's basically what it is, on the Chaos range especially, or on Cataphracty and Tartaros Terminator armor bits, they look much better. Uh, I think a little bit of an update to make it more in line with how Forgeril did Horus' actual Talon of Horus for the character series will go a long way to helping it look much better. But I do like the concept. Anytime you have a lightning claw with a gunshot on top of it, I'm interested. So that's cool. And that can be posed uh, like it's firing, or you can be posed palm up, like the old Forge Roll, like bigger model thing, like he's doing a ritual or beckoning something uh, forth or whatever. You can do. You can just have subtle changes in the way that the talent is positioned and the fingers are a little bit can convey so much. So. There, that's some examples there. His demon sword is supposed to be this big bad demon sword that I think even once wounded, the, you know, did a flesh wound to the emperor during the webway uh, wars or whatever. But anyway, I could be making that up. Um, it's not very impressive. The blade Antwier that Castell and Crow wields, you know, it doesn't wield but keeps beats people to death with and uh, keeps it out of the hands of anybody not pure enough not pure like him, looks a lot better than, than Drachnian here. Um, and part of that is the hilt, the way the blade comes out above the hilt because it's got the little spiky detail side bits. I see what they're going for. I just feel, again, perhaps due to the limitations of the time he was made, the blade feels too short. Either make the blade longer, have it be super long, super crazy because, hey, 40K, it works, or get rid of the spiky bits and then just make the blade feel longer because it'll go all the way down to the hilt. I think that would help it. Posing it can be posed behind him or or, or uh, angled down a bit more like he's about to swipe or do something. There's a lot of posing you can do with just his innate pose. I'm not a fan of trophy racks, but in all of his artwork, he's got it for 40k. So I guess just update the trophy racks to be more in line, feeling better, less, less um, I don't want to say constricted, but less uh, congested uh, than they currently feel. Could go a long way. His Terminator armor... As much as I love to see him back in Cataphracty armor because it would help him stand out more amongst Terminators, you know, keep details similar that he has now and just put him in Cataphracty armor and you solve the problem. But all of his artwork for the years he's been out like this shows this armor. And I don't think they're going to just overhaul it and then have to redo the artwork or just say the artwork doesn't matter anymore or whatever. I think they're going to keep this armor going. So with that said... They could have the pose more or less be the same, but have him feel like he's standing up a little straighter. He feels a little hunched over in the way he looks, in, you know, in his pose currently. And um, they could go ahead and just give him some more specific details, maybe less clutter on his torso. He's got a big, like, WWF style, or I guess WWE now style belt of champions he's wearing on his waist, it looks like, with the Chaos Undivided symbol. It just looks that way. It's a little bit too dominating the torso area and then you have the skull on top of that it's a skull on top of a skull with skulls to the side they can clean it up make it more subtle smaller and i think that can go a long way um whatever they do though they got to give them some a bit more detail as uniquely his own that they won't then copy on future chaos terminator stuff that's the problem really is that the chaos terminator and terminator lord stuff has copied his look and therefore he feels bland so they just got to give him a bit more that way um, and then I think really you have a, a good looking model. Really updating the talent of horse and the weaponry and just giving it a, a much crisper new mo model with a slightly different pose is all you really need to do. And he will won't be one of my least favorite. And I know that for sure. I think he'll look a lot better. Anyways, what are your thoughts on this model? Share it in the comment section below. Thanks for sticking through me talking entirely too long about Abaddon. Uh, share your thoughts on his 40k model and any questions, comments, or requests. Leave it in the comment section. And until next time, take it easy.